Hello, guys. I want to have a little talk with you before I start my uh, show. Uh, today is Monday, October 29th, 2018. And I'm going to tell you, we're in for three months of pure hell. That's how long it's going to last, roughly. Uh, and I'll, I want to explain, and uh, it's going to take me a few minutes before I get into the markets. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I got like eight minutes until the markets open up anyway. So I want to talk about this a little bit. Now, what the Fed's doing is they are, their bonds are maturing. $50 billion a month now of maturing bonds. And they're, 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 uh, they're collecting the, the, they're, they're letting them mature and they're collecting the, they're not rolling them over and they're not buying more. This is essentially the same thing as selling bonds into a market where it's not conducive for bond buying. Now, now, now because the yields have risen, investors are buying bonds, but it's not conducive. And this is the thing. Rates have to get higher before it becomes more conducive to, to, to absorb all of these buyers that are going to be needed. So each time you get a pulse, the rates go higher, um, bond yields get higher, you get a bunch of, uh, let's call it what it is, greedy buyers coming in and trying to snatch them up because everybody's looking for yield nowadays. So they see a higher yield, they grab them. Uh, now here's the, the ticket on this. These greedy buyers, they think, hey, you know what? Uh, oh, boy, these bonds are great because I'm going to tell you, we've had low interest rates for so long. Zerp and nerp. Zero interest rate policy and, and negative interest rate policy. For so long that it's been so hard to find yield on everything that they're seeing these, uh, they're eyeing these U.S. treasuries, which are taken off quicker than the other treasuries. In other countries, the bonds in other countries aren't moving as fast. The U.S. Treasuries are giving you the highest yield. Heck, right now, U.S. Treasury yields are almost as good as Italian Treasury yields. You, you can get almost as good a deal. So, so investors are buying in. Each time it pulses higher, each time yields rise, investors are coming in. And they're snatching them up. But what? And they're knocking the price back down a little bit. But this money's coming out of other places. Because you're not going to buy them for free. <laughs> anyway, so here's the thing. This is why we're going to be in for three months of hell. Because it's very specific, and I'll be very specific about this. When this U.S. Treasury starts to creep back up, the U.S. 10-year right now, when it passes the 3.25 threshold, 3.25%, and it starts to head up, toward 3.5%. And, and what's going to happen now, now that the market is probably going to stabilize a little bit, I'm anticipating the market opening up this morning. And actually, I'll tell you what, I'm anticipating the market's going to rise over the next little while. That's what I'm anticipating. And the reason why is because uh, they're out there and the, the companies especially 10 in particular, are buying up. They're, they're, they're buying, and, and there's a blackout on this, and the blackout's just in, and they're coming in. They're coming in like greedy, like, and they're going to be buying up their own uh, stock buybacks. And, and here's the thing. Uh, this is opening up right now into the stock market. So we're probably going to see a little raise in the stock market for the next little while because also the bond market's been satiated with buyers. They've satiated themselves. They're, they're, like, they're like a pig that goes and eats as much as he can eat and his stomach's so full now he can't eat anymore. And this is what the bond buyers are like right now. They've sat, they're satiated, <laughs> saturated, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, they're, they're full. They're full for now. So what we're going to see with the bond market is we're going to see the rates start to creep back up again. Because they fed it the trough. These guys have fed it the trough, these pigs. And, and <laughs> the rates are going to, the bond rates, the bond yields are going to start to creep back up again slowly. And so is so uh, as these bond yields rise, we're going to see the stock market rise too over the next little while, I think. 
And it, honest to God, it could be enough where it could make new high. It could. But we're going to see a rising stock market. This is what I think. Now, now, uh, how many minutes I got until the stock market opens? 10.27. I got three minutes until the stock market opens. Here's what's going to happen. When those bond yields start to go up to head toward 3.5%, we're going to see a reverse of fates in the stock market from the from rising. It's only rising to fall. That's what it's doing right now. It's going to rise to fall, and we're that's when we're going to see the big fall in the stock market. When the the two U.S. U.S. ten year now, it's going to take a month or two to get there. It's working its way there slowly. Then when the uh, it might take two months. I'm just gonna I'm just estimating all this, but maybe two months. In December, I believe we have another rate hike increase coming of 25 basis points. That's when I'm expecting, just after that rate hike, that's when I'm expecting all these things to merge together at the same time. You're, at the same time, you're going to have a rate hike increase that they can't afford to do, but they have to do, coupled with the stock market crescending crescendo, a crescendo in the stock market. So it's ripe and ready. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's the fruit is ripe and ready to fall off the tree. And, and at the same time, you've got the, the, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, raising rates. And the same time, the bond market will be like, on the U.S. 10-year, like 3.4%. It's all ready. Everything's ready to go. All the pieces are setting themselves into place for this next rate hike increase by the Fed. Then shortly thereafterwards, what I see is the fall uh, of, the, of the stock market. It's delayed and it's delayed and it's delayed, but I think this is it. I think this is the big one coming. And what's going to happen is where the three months of pain is going to come in is after the stock market collapses, the first quarter probably of this coming 2019 is going to be very, very painful for everyone because I think what it's going to do is it's going to trigger the stock market collapse. I think it's going to trigger a number of other events that have been waiting to happen, such as Deutsche Bank for one. And, and it's going to trigger a, a chain of dominoes falling in the economic system that's going to be hard to repair because once those dominoes start to fall, then the world's central banks are going to have to react to that then in a panic way. And that's when they're going to change the 180-degree turn of monetary policy. So the three months come in, probably January, February, and March of 2019. It's probably going to be just like the Economist magazine cover that said had the Phoenix predicting 2018. Now they got a new cover predicting 2019 that's totally black. And that's what we might go through in the first three months of 2019 is complete and utter almost like chaos in the financial systems until they come in and I figure it's going to take about three months before they actually come in and try to correct everything and this time it's going to take so much money that they're going to have to inject into the system that they are going to create an economic recovery on the other side but that economic recovery do not jump up and down and cheer for the Fed and say, hey, they've solved the problem, they've created an economic recovery, because that economic recovery is going to be the trigger for the hyperinflation, which is going to start to set in then, slowly at first, but over a period of months, the hyperinflation is going to increase faster and faster and faster, and that's when we're going to get our crack-up boom. So I know all that's extremely complicated. Um... I'm going to tell you on the thing, I'm going to say move forward to 10 minutes if you want just the market report. So we're going to get started on the market report. I, I, my thing shows me that we're at 9 minutes and 49 seconds. So let's get into the markets and let's start the charts right here. And let's take a look at what's going on first with the silver price. 
So what we're seeing today is the silver price is, is, is in that narrow range. It's 14.65. It's been there for days. Hasn't been going anywhere. Uh, now, let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin's price today. What we're seeing is we're seeing a, a, a drop down to 6,270. The drop happened suddenly. It was going along stable for the longest time in cryptocurrency. And all of a sudden, she just kind of, the bottom just kind of fell out of her, you know. And uh, now we're, we're looking at a price drop. I don't know how much longer this will continue. But it could be a pretty good little buying opportunity. This is what these price drops in cryptocurrency represent. Now, if you're going to buy cryptocurrency, I would recommend that you think about buying it and holding it for at least five years. And that means that don't plan on moving your money out of it. You just buy it and 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 then you just if it goes down, you just say, "Heck, you know, I've only invested X amount." Of, whatever you can afford to lose whatever look this is the way it is if you can afford to light your cigarette with a bill like a hundred dollar bill if you can afford to light a cigarette with a hundred dollar bill and burn a hundred dollar bill up then that's a good hundred dollar bill to invest in cryptocurrency if you can afford to lose it and then once you've spent that money in cryptocurrency put your cryptocurrency away in your cryptocurrency wallet where it's nice and safe, offline or whatever, and then just leave it there and plan on leaving it there for the next five years. If you're planning on buying cryptocurrency and selling it next month or selling it next week or whatever, don't do it. Not a good investment, I'd say. The good investment in cryptocurrency is going to be the people that hold it all the way through until cryptocurrency takes advantage of this up-and-coming hyperinflation. So there, that's about cryptocurrency. Now, Dow Jones Industrial Average today. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Ray on the money. She's up 204, 213 points. I think that we're going to see several up days here, a number of up days. And, uh, but this is, this, and she might even make a new high, but this is, this is very dangerous now at this point. This market, when it moves, it's just its just a, like a piece of fruit that's ripening itself and getting ready to fall off the tree. that That's what we're looking at here. Now, uh, now we're going to take a look at Sweet Light Crude. Uh, we're down 37 cents on the day. This is the effects of deflation. I wouldn't be surprised if this extends over to silver and gold, uh, this little bit of a deflation. That's that's moving. This this is the effects of the Fed sucking fifty billion dollars a month out of the economy, simply. And until the real fear hits, gold will react to a fear trade. But the fear's not there yet. There's no fear. So so the, there's a bit of deflation and no fear. What do you get? You're going to get price slides in gold and silver. You're going to get price slides in in, in oil. You're going to get price slides in all of the commodities. Uh, and the dollar should be strong, you know. Now let's take a look at cryptocurrency market capitalizations. Just while we're here, we can see that it lost. It went down from like two hundred nine billion down to two hundred three billion, and fifty four point one percent Bitcoin dominance. And just look at this slide in the charts. All of the all of the numbers down today, down 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 across the board. Bonds and rates today. It's just like I said, they're creeping up. There they go. See them creeping? Uh, they're up almost two basis points on the U.S. 10-year today. That's going to continue, but slowly, over the next book, next two months. I'm expecting two months or so uh, for this rate to creep back up above 3.25, 3, 3 up into the, like, the 3.4 range. That's when we're going to get our crash. Watch that 10-year. Watch that that's that's the that's my key indicator of when the crash is going to occur, and you guys know what it is too now, so you can watch it. Uh, when that U.S. ten-year hits, and right now it's at three point oh nine eight. When that U.S. ten-year hits about oh I don't know, it passes three point two five, you're in the danger. That's when you're it's danger then, and it's probably going to get up to like three point four, and then all of a sudden boom. Just boom out of nowhere. It's going to really, it's going to take an awful lot of people by surprise. 
It's not going to take you guys by surprise because you'll say, hey, he's, that's what he's been talking about all along. All of a sudden, boom, it's just going to hit out of nowhere. After the next interest rate hike, uh, they're going to hike 25 basis points. Okay? So that's where we're going with that. Uh, U.S. dollar index today, 96.65. And see it creeping up? So everything's moving in the directions I thought it was going to move in. That's what's happening. And uh, the markets are moving exactly as I predicted that they were going to move. And the next stop, the next waypoint that you're going to look for is when that U.S. 10-year crosses the 3.25 threshold. Then we're in the danger zone for the next market crash. But we're going to have a little period right now where the markets are going to creep up. And why is a stock buybacks? Uh, there's a blackout on stock buybacks, and, and, and now that's ending. And uh, what's happening is, is there's going to be new fresh money coming into the stock market. And also in set, uh, what will happen is, is the negative sentiment will start to wane because investors have a very short memory. They're like a gerbil. You know, or like a like a they're like a hamster. How long is a hamster's memory? That's what investors are like. Anyway, <laughs> listen. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next show. Bye, bye, guys.